for innovation and excellence. My presentation is in three main parts. First, we'll look at excellence, what excellence is. Following from there, we'll would move to innovation, look at innovation, and then finally we'd look at um, a little road map, what I call the max factor to being innovative. And therefore, let's start with first looking at what excellence is. Well, when we look at excellence, we say that, um, Seneca says that life is like a play. It's not the length, but the excellence of the acting that matters. In our lives, what we do when we are going up and down, how do we do it? How do we do our act? And if um, Funny Face were here, he would say, how do you do your swag? In your life, put your swag on. In your life, how do you do it? How excellently do you do your act? How well can somebody say that really when this gentleman or this lady does something, I know it is going to be excellent. How or what do you do that makes you excellent? Excellent is simply doing something that is above at the average. You're doing something that thinks everybody's doing things normally, but then it must surpass a certain mark. It's a certain landmark that you can say that, well, this is good, but this is excellent because it goes beyond the ordinary. So first, you have the extraordinary um, value. Secondly, I mean, the things are there. People are coming in and you say, oh, I think I can do it in a particular way that changes it from what we are doing normally to something above usual. It also helps something that we call the purpose, the actual purpose, the fulfillment of the purpose for which something is being done. The Greeks have something that they call arete, meaning that as you live your life, how well are you living your life? What kind of good life are you living that somebody can use your life and the person would be encouraged, the person has something better coming up out of his life? Today's excellence be tomorrow's mediocrity. Guess what? Some time ago, I mean, there was nothing like a bicycle existing in the world. And then we were all either walking to wherever we are going or we were using horses. And then somebody came and said, well, you know, there was a possibility to mechanize the way we walk. And then the bicycle came. When the bicycle came, everybody thought, wow, that is it. I mean, that is what, that is what we've been waiting for all our lives. So we're doing the bicycle and then somebody said, well, you know, it's possible to do a horseless chariot. Are you crazy? Are you, what's wrong with you? So the person said, you know, let's try it. And then we get the car. And some time ago, the car, the farthest to go would be 20 miles per hour. That was yesterday's excellence. And people were like, wow. But guess what? Right now we have cars breaking the sound barrier. That is today's excellence. Guess what? 20 years down the line, that will be tomorrow's mediocrity because now we have cars that will not only be, I mean, on the road, we'll have some in the sky. I hope I'm still here to see, you know, and all kind of things. Do you get me? But, so our life is not what we live and we can live the same life and we are going up and down. We are saying, well, I've done this thing, it is fine, so I don't need to change anything. You are making a big mistake. Excellence has three main angles. You have the innovation at the top. You have um, the technology or integrity at the, at the second corner. And then you have um, the quality. With the innovation, and that is what we'll be focusing on for the rest of this program. Innovation simply says how you do things in a different manner. Integrity is a thing doing well. If it's doing well, how do we do it? And how can we change it? And then the quality if the thing, the quality is 60% um, today, we have to aim at going to 70. When we get the 70, it's now become mediocre, so we move to 80. And so it's a constantly shifting barrier wherever we go. You see that young man with the light off. I'll say that the light is first saying that, well, you know, we have people who are in Takradi who really need maybe um, somewhere to live. Because, because of the oil boom, now everybody's coming to Takradi, so I need somewhere to live. But we are, I mean, when we build our houses, 
usually takes about give and take. How long will it take to build a four bedroom house in Takradi? One, uh, we're here one year, six months. And there's so, there are so many people waiting for the, for the buildings to live in. I mean, when we're doing the program in um, Accra, um, Dr. Otabil brought this fantastic video of some Chinese people um, building a 30-story building in 15 days. Building technology students in Tripoli, where are you? That is a challenge for you. And it was done in 2011, so now it's even old. And I'm sure next time they'll try and do it in even less time. So if we have a huge unmet need in the housing population, the housing market in Takradi, how do we take advantage of it and try to reduce our building time so that we should be able that let's say three months we should be able to finish a building how can we do that so there's an unmet need it's recognized we need uh, places to to live in takradi how do we meet that need guess what i mean last time somebody was talking to some me about something and i said well that's a possibility you know the containers that are in, i mean on the on in the in the harbor if you go and ask them that you will build a house from it, because we've actually had an office, lived in the used an office that was made from a container. And this time, you, so it's a ready-made structure. All you do is to put in the quarters, and then you have a house. How long would that take us? How many people would, would think about doing it after the conference? So what I might need is going on in the society. The next thing that you have to talk about is... How, how do you change or what do you use to meet that need? We've just looked at this housing problem where you have things happening here. So how creative can we be or how innovative can we be to meet need that is in the market? You take these containers from the port, you break it up, you set it. You can actually do story buildings from it. Yeah, somebody is saying yes, so it's possible. It's possible. So instead of just to looking at it as places where we could um, sell our provisions, let's now look at it as places where we could have, places where we could, we could, we could, we could have people sleeping in there. And then we use the necessary or the relevant technology. Sometimes the technology does not even exist, but we can create the technology to meet that need because guess what? When Wright brothers started flying in the, in the air, the, the technology for flying was not there. But they use other people's platforms and they built on it and built on it. And then eventually, they were able to say, okay, now this machine should be able to take you from one place to the other and get you where you want to go. And then finally, you try to make some money out of it. One thing about Springboard is we always encourage you that at the end of it all, you should be able to meet your needs. Not just create an innovative idea and there's no business model, nothing that helps you uh, meet your financial needs. So as you are being innovative in things that you are doing in your own life, see how that leads you, that gives you a better opportunity in the marketplace. So that is basically how innovations come about. So what are some of the, um, the ABC of innovation? Have you seen that um, elephant there? We'll connect the dot to it right now. But the first thing is to connect unlikely dots. I remember a story that Steve Jobs once told and said when he was in um, university, he decided that his parents were spending too much money on his um, education and therefore he dropped out of school. After he did that, now he needed to, I mean, he didn't, he, so now he decided to go to courses that he felt he wanted to attend. So he attended calligraphy courses, he did different, different things, went to um, the temple, everything. Now, when they started creating the Apple Macintosh, he felt one interface that would really help would be having interesting fonts. And therefore, he brought back that idea that the, the um, the useless, quote-unquote, useless class that he had been to. And that is why 
Macintosh started with a lot of beautiful phones and that made it the market leader. What have you done in your life? Where have you worked in your life? That somewhere along the line you think, really, this doesn't play any role. Sometimes you, we could be that when you were growing up, you lived with a step-parent or somebody who really gave you very harsh living conditions. And therefore, you just think that that is the time in your past and you don't want to visit it. But guess what? That period builds resilience in you. And therefore, you have the opportunity or you go somewhere, you go to a new company and everybody is slacking. Everybody just says, oh, let me just do the, I mean, what is just expected of me. But because you have that resilience in you, because you have done things that under normal circumstances, other people will crash and therefore you have built the resilience. Guess what? You have the ability to work beyond ordinary hours. You have the ability to to think of ways of surviving in a very, very adverse place. And therefore, let's connect the unlikely dots in our lives. Let's not say that, oh, well, my life is just a linear course. I'm going to school. I'm learning this course. When I finish the course, I'm going to be um, a bank manager or whatever it is. And after that, then that's it. There are other things that you can add to your life and bring some breeze into your life. I have the saying that, release the breaks on your life. Sometimes the thing that makes us not accomplish, the things that doesn't make us innovate, the thing that doesn't make us move from one level to the other is I cannot do it. And sometimes it's from the society and you see that huge elephant over there. That elephant will not go and break that chain even though it has the ability to do it. Why? Because when it was a child, they ch or when it was a baby calf, they chained a very huge chain which was more, more stronger than he was uh, or it was around the neck. So every time you try to, and every time you try to move, he was or she was confined, tried several times. So it built into his psyche that, well, you know, I can't break this chain. But guess what? This, at this stage right now, can pull anything why doesn't it change? Because it has the bricks in the mind. So I say here, let's break the elephantiasis. Let's say it together. Let's break the elephantiasis. What have you put in your mind? Is it something from the social angle? Is it something from your parental background? As for us, we don't succeed. Or as for us, when I'm doing something, um, your friends come and say, oh, my friends will laugh at me. That's the most common one. So we don't even think of how we can be innovative in what we do. Um, the plenty can't, I won't, I must not. And we, we keep on adding on and adding. I mean, for the ABC, the final point is when you live, who would be sad that you ever lived? Is it just your immediate family? Or will society be happy because you lived? They were able to get the iPad, they were able to get the aeroplane, they were able to get whatever that you would bring into, the, into, into society. What would you do? Live a full life. Don't say my life, as for me, um, let's go and come. No. What can I add to this society that I'm living in? What can I bring to bear that any time that people lift up something, all of us, we lift up iPads, I mean, those of us who use iPads, and say, yeah. But it's because somebody decided to live a full life, explore all the aspects of life. What are we exploring in our lives? And how are we doing that? Some of the benefits of innovation means that it improves our, our lives. Whatever we are doing, whether it's in our business, in our individual lives, wherever we are, it improves our lives. And that is something we're very grateful for because somebody's success means that I can stand on that success and move forward. When we have a platform and we stand on that platform, we are able to project further. If we are standing on the, on the, on the ground, we cannot reach far what our fathers have done. We can stand on it and move to another level. And therefore, we need to be innovative to bring improvement in our lives. I mean, anything that we can think about. Some time ago, most auditoriums were flat. Right now, we say that let's graduate it. So no matter where anybody is sitting, you can see 
that is an improvement. That is an innovation. It's still the same space, but the seating arrangement is different. What improvements can we bring into our lives? It also makes us reduce costs, depend on how you do it. And then also, if we have an old way of doing something, you replace it by while you're doing it. Because if every time we go to the hospital, we have to go to somebody, the person will write our name. The person writes your name and the person gives you a card. And then after that, you go to the next person. The person says, where's your card? The person goes into the archives and looks for a folder. Presently, it is possible that you don't need the card anymore. You come and stand there, then you say your name is um, Akosia Jewa. Akosia Jewa, they look in the, in the um, computer, they send your name to the um, nurse, they send your name to the um, doctor, and then it's fast. So we don't have to spend 10 minutes just looking for one folder, another 10 minutes looking for one folder, another 10 minutes looking for that folder. In the end, you have everybody sitting there looking so sad, so, so morose, simply because we are doing things the same old way. Let's be innovative in the things that we do. How can we be innovative? Albert talked a lot about mentors, and so I would just say by mentorship. And that picture that we have there some, of somebody flying. This is, um, I, I took this concept from the Greek mythology uh, where we have two people trapped on an island and they were trapped in the, in, the, in the tower and they said, well, we want to free ourselves. They were in prison and they um, built the wings so that the, they could fly out of um, the, the place. Unfortunately, that is Icarus and when Icarus, Icarus was going, his father told him, don't fly too high to the sun, otherwise your thing would melt. And don't fly too low to the water, otherwise you would, you, the water will get on your wings and you will fall and drown. Unfortunately, he didn't listen to the master. He didn't listen to his father. So he flew too high and he crashed and he died. Yes. Mentorship, benchmarking is one way that we can learn, we can improve what we do. What is somebody doing that you like and you think that you can learn from? Go to learn from that person. When the person gives you the tricks of the trade, sometimes you say, you say the person is trying to stifle me, but guess what? You never know. Things will work out, so learn from the mentors. The next thing is your actions. And... Um, Seth used this quotation, I have changed it a little bit for my own use. Expect more than others think is possible. And that's the road to excellence, that's the road to innovation. Somebody says, this is the way it is done, but guess what? You say, no, I think I can do it in a better way. I think I should be able to change the way things are done. So expect more than others think is possible. Care more than others think is wise. Somebody says that, um, something is going on here, how can I help? Sometimes you don't want to reach out to people, but guess what? If you care more, you will be able to do something extra. Risk more than others think is safe, and then dream more than others think is practical. Um, and here we have a, a quotation, Genesis 37, 9, where Joseph dreamt about how he would be the head of his brothers. And the brother said, are you crazy? Are you mad? But the Bible says something that I love. They said, Joseph dreamt yet another dream. So when people think that what you're doing is crazy, what you're doing is mad, what you're doing is not possible, please don't stop there. Dream yet another dream. Do something that will take you beyond what you have been able to accomplish so far. Move beyond the barriers that society, that your peers, that your family may have set for you and go beyond that. And guess what? When you move and you are able to reach beyond, they would come and say, wow, I am so, so, so excited. This brings me to my final point for tonight, the magic ingredient X. Every one of us, do we all have coins here? Do we all have coins here? Okay, please, everybody, take a coin out, please. If you don't have a coin, borrow some. 
Borrow a coin. Borrow a coin from somebody. Borrow a coin. Everybody borrow a coin. Do you all have the coin? Fantastic. Okay, now I want every single one of us to take the coin, whether it's your right or your left. Hold it between these three fingers. Okay, this one should be free. So just hold it between these three fingers. Okay? Do you all have it? Oh, fantastic. So now just drop it in your palm. Drop it in your palm. Some people, the thing will drop on the floor. No big deal. I mean, but I, I, did almost all of us, were we all able to accomplish it? Yeah. We're all able to accomplish it. Fantastic. Okay, so now let's take it back. Put it in your three fingers again. And now I want you to take your thumb, put it... Um, yes. So I want you to take the thumb, put it under the coin. And I want you, so now bring your fingers back and attempt to take the coin. But you don't take the coin, but you drop it in your hand and you hold your hand like that. Okay? So you do it like this. Okay? Are we, were we successful? Were we successful? So does it look like you just did a magic trick? Did we just do a magic trick? I mean, if, if you didn't know this trick and I just came and did this, where do you think the coin would be? Where do you think the coin would be? In your right hand. Because I made it seem as if I was taking the coin from my left into the right. So here's the coin now. It's still here, right? Every single one of us, if I should say that, okay, now let's do the trick and we can practice it over and over again. We all have the ways we will do it. The magic ingredient is no magic ingredient. It's just knowing what the principle is. Our lives, whatever it becomes, is based on we learning the tricks, the magic, the, 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 the uh, principles that govern that particular thing. Therefore, as we go along in life, let's not say that, hey, um, it, I, I don't know how to do it or I can't do it, but learn the principle. Let's learn the principles and apply it the way we can apply it best. Because guess what? We are all different. We are all separate. We are all specific individuals that have ideas that can only be made real by the way we translate things. The magic ingredient that acts in any factor is you and how you interpret it, how you become innovative, how you become excellent, how you use technology in any sphere of life to improve what you're doing so that 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line, people will say, you know what? Our society is better because she lived. Our society is better because he lived. Our society is better because you were there and you made a mark. You made a difference. You brought things to a different level from where you're going. That bird over there is flying. It is not a trick. It happened. Real life. It was taken. Upside down flying. Can you fly? And if you can fly, can you change the way you fly? Bible says that whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are honorable, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are gracious, if there is any excellence, if there is anything that is worthy of praise, think on these things and do these things. Thank you.